Jesus Christ, to the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Welcome to worship, everyone, as we gather together on this 14th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, welcome to all of our guests and members who are joining us in person, everyone who is worshiping with us online or watching on television or a DVD later in the week. It is good to be gathered together in worship. Uh, if, you, if we haven't met before, my name is Trevor Tome. I serve as the Director of Congregational Life here at Emmanuel. Pastor Karina is on, has been on vacation this week, and we have not one but two clergy leading us in worship today. Um, our presiding minister today is the Reverend Jim Stein. Um, he's a retired ELCA pastor from the Greater Milwaukee Synod. Um, he and his wife Kathy recently joined the congregation, and they also happen to be Matt's parents. We're glad to have him leading us in worship today. Our preaching minister is the Right Reverend Dr. Kay Ward. Uh, Kay is um, hiding right now back here. Um, <laughs> Kay is a retired uh, Moravian bishop, and she's a writer and speaker. She lives at the Marcourt, and we are excited to have her back in Emmanuel's pulpit today. We're also happy to have Don Christensen with us today, as um, he and Matt play a number of uh, piano duets throughout worship. It is good to be gathered together in God's name. Please rise as you are comfortable, and we sing together.
gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. For your gift, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may lie in your love and serve only in your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Children of God, we have a calling and a purpose. God invites us into celebrating God's grace in Jesus Christ, accepting all unconditionally, and growing God's call to serve the world. My friends, this is who we are, and it's who we strive to become. We are the church, called to welcome all people in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Direct us, O Lord God, in all our doings with your most gracious favor, and extend to us your continual help, that in all our works, begun, continued, and ended in you, 
we may glorify your holy name. And finally, by your mercy, bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. It is time for children's time, so I invite the kids to come on up onto the blue carpet. Oh, we've got a few kids coming. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Good morning. How are you all today? Blessed by God. Today and every day, we are blessed by God. That is an awesome shirt. That's pretty cool. All right. So in our scripture reading today, Mrs. Mack is going to be reading a reading from Romans in just a minute. And in it, the reading tells us to love one another, and it gives us all kinds of ideas for how to do that. I am wondering if you have any ideas of how we can show love or care for other people. How might we be able to do that? Can you think of any? Yeah. Um, help open doors for people. You can help open doors for people. That's awesome. That's a great way to love and care for someone. What are some other ways that we can love and care for people? Yep. You can help them across the street if they're too old, yes. <laughs> Any other ways we can love people? What are some ways that you can show love and care for people at school? Can you be kind to people or play with others nicely? Yes, Martin, did you have something? You can bring snacks. That is a great way to show love and care for other people. So I have, you can share snacks. Yep, that's great. So I have a game for us to play today. We're going to play, I know, yes, we're going to have a matching game today. So I have a number of pictures here. What is this a picture of? A Band-Aid. I have, what's this? Tissues. I have, what's this? dog treats. I have, what's this? Friends. Yeah, friends. What are the friends doing? Hugging. Hugging. Okay. And then I have this. What's this? A phone. And what number are they calling? 911. Okay. So I am going, I have a number of cards here. Oh, I have one more card. I missed it. What's on this one? They're reading. It writing. looks like, the, yep, writing. Looks like they might be working on homework. We'll see. Okay, so I am going to read a scenario, something that's happening, and you are going to help me match the best way we can love someone in that circumstance, okay? So here's the first one. A classmate sneezes. Should we give them a dog treat if they sneeze? I don't think so. What, how, what might we do the best way to show love for one another? Yes, we should give them a tissue. That's awesome. Okay, let's see. How else can we love one another? Your dog is well behaved. Do you think we should call 911 if your dog is well behaved? I don't think so. You're right. I think we should give them a dog treat. That's a good one. Okay, let's see. You see something that is on fire. Should you give the fire a Band-Aid? No. no. What should we do? We should, we should call 911. That's a, that's a good answer. OK. Let's see. Your friend is having trouble with homework. What should you do? You should help them, right? You can help them study. That's a great, great option. OK. Let's see. Your friend scraped their knee. What might you do? Okay, yep, I think so too. You can give them a Band-Aid. And finally, what do you do if your friend is sad? You can give them a hug. That's a great option. You can give them a hug or a handshake or a high five, whatever works for them. So, all right, these are just my notes, so we don't need to touch those. All right, so 
our love should match whatever someone is experiencing. So we need to think about, okay, how do we best love one another? And Mrs. Mack is going to read that in our reading today. So can we pray together? Repeat after me. Dear God, Thank you for love. Help us to love all people as best we can. All together, amen. All right, can you love one another with me and pick up all these pieces of paper? <laughs> all right, thanks for coming up. You can go back to your seats. <coughs> A reading from Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haunting, but associate with the lonely. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay evil for evil, but take thought what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live peacefully with others. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will be heaping burning coals on their heads. Do not overcome evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate there is a pool, called in Hebrew Bethsatha, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he'd been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up and while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, stand up, take your mat and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and he began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. 
So the Jews said to the man who had been cured, it is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. But he answered them, the man who made me well said to me, take up your mat and walk. Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had disappeared into the crowd. Later Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, see, you've been made well. Do not sin anymore so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Therefore, the Jews started persecuting Jesus because he was doing such things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, my father is still working and I also am working. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. Good morning. The Gospel reading started with a curious verse, which needs a little explanation. The first verse says this, After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And so you might ask, so what happened before? We didn't read that part. Well, the text is referring to a man that isn't identified. It's, we know that he is a, an official of some port, sort, and he has a son who is dying. He comes to Jesus and begs him to heal his son. And later, he receives word that his son has, in fact, been healed. The text says, this healing is counted as the second sign that Jesus was the Son of God. And the story we just heard is the story of a third sign, a healing sign. I don't know if you got the drift of the, of the text. There are two parts to the story. The first is the account of all of those people laying by the sheep gate pool, waiting for a miracle. Why were they laying there, you might ask? Well, it was believed that at a certain point, an angel from God would come down and stir up the water, and the first person in would be healed. Now, that just doesn't seem fair, but that's what the story says. Um, as I was going over this this morning, I thought, there is a, a spiritual that we sing that I never understood what it meant until now. You know it, wade in the water, wade in the water, children, wade in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Ha! It's from that story. That's not in my notes, by the way. There was a man who had been laying there 34 years waiting for a miracle. And so Jesus says, do you want to make, be made well? Now, I think I know the answer. I would say, you betcha. I've been laying here a long time. But this man also says, yeah, well, I can't get there fast enough. So every time it happens, I'm left behind, and I'm still laying here. Now, a little psychobabble, perhaps. Modern thinkers would say, well, he really didn't want to be healed. He kind of enjoyed being a victim and having people take care of him. But it really doesn't matter what he says because Jesus ignores the whole thing. He ignores the excuse. He heals him right on the spot. Tells him, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Here's where the plot thickens. There were folks watching this event. You can imagine, that was quite an occasion. And there were some Jewish religious leaders there. And the stunning part of the story is they do not seem to be impressed at all with the fact that this man just got healed. 
they go right to the part that's interesting to them. It was the Sabbath. Um, that, that, the text doesn't say that at the beginning of the story, but you see that soon. That's all they're interested in. The day was the Sabbath, and so they rushed up to the man who is now walking, healed, and said, don't you know you can't pick up your mat? Even that small thing, you can't work on the Sabbath. He just says, I don't know about that. This is what happened to me. The man said, take up your mat, so I did, and I'm healed. Later, Jesus finds the man in the temple, and I'm hoping that he went there to thank God for what had just happened. We don't know that. It doesn't say that in the text. So therefore, the Jews, the religious leaders, started persecuting Jesus because he was doing such things on the Sabbath. For this reason, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him because he was not only breaking the Sabbath, but he was calling God his own father, making himself equal to God. Jesus answered, my father is still working and I also am working, Sabbath or not. This might be a good day to think about work. It's Labor Day tomorrow. We have a special needs son and he always says, Mom, isn't it funny you get the day off on Labor Day? It really doesn't make any sense. How are you going to celebrate the day? Are you going to work? Um, fortunately or unfortunately, there are many folks who will work tomorrow, and we are grateful for them. There are many sermons people could write about work on Labor Day. Um, we could write about um, calling for social justice and better child labor laws and certain professions uh, striking and boycotting for better pay and um, equity in pay and a constant need of our country to make livable wages for people. And all those would be perfect sermon topics, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. Another day, another day. Today we're going to talk about what in the world does work have to do with faith. We have mixed feelings about faith. I can remember over my desk when I was working in a seminary, I had a poster, a big poster, and it said, work fascinates me. I could sit and watch it for hours. <laughs> when I think about that, that's a really strange thing to have over your desk. Um, you've heard this, if you love what you do, you'll never have to work a day in your life. Is that really true? I'm not sure. Is work that is paid for more valuable than work that is done without being paid? Should we only have to work so hard and then be able to sit down and rest? There's been some, a whole lot of conversation about that in these terribly hot, hot days across the country when um, companies were forced to give people time to take a break and drink water, which seems counterproductive to their, who they are as a company. Is our labor, our work, still considered a punishment for that Adam and Eve episode in the garden. Should we be working on Sunday, on our Sabbath? Have we really been created to work? Is it our nature to work? The dictionary defines work in this way. Work is activity in which we exert strength, or faculties or abilities to do or perform something. That's a very loose definition. In the gospel, Jesus uses his strength and his abilities to work. And he's very clear about saying healing on any day of the week was the work that he was called to do. He was performing valuable work. Was it valuable even though he didn't get paid? I don't have any kind of gospel evidence that Jesus got a salary. 
Did that mean his work wasn't as valuable? Is work only valuable when someone else might hold it in high regard? Work is valuable because God has given us the strength and the abilities to work, each at our own level, depending upon where we are and what our circumstances. And there's so much work to be done, work that is backbreaking and heartbreaking and tedious and frustrating and just plain hard, but it is work that is needed to do. As I was giving that list, were there any jobs that came to your mind that might have fit one of those definitions? I'm grateful and humbled every single day that the work that I have done has been work of privilege. I rarely broke a sweat. I was paid to write and read and sit down and think deep thoughts. People paid me for that. What a wonderful thing. And I pray every day for those who are unemployed and underemployed and persons who perform work that is completely unnoticed and underappreciated. What of those who are retired? I'm speaking as an 81-year-old woman who retired almost 20 years ago. I know as soon as that came out of my mouth that my husband will correct me and say, no, it was only 18, dear. <laughs> I round out. Most of us don't retire um, to not be busy. We retire because we face the fact that as we age, there will be ways that we need to adjust, to accommodate to our abilities, our new or disabilities, as they come. We retire because we want to find new and healthy ways to work. We also may have to be challenged with knowing who we are when we aren't anymore who we used to be. So, what does work have to do with our life of faith? Is the work that we all have in common as Christians gathered together this morning? Do Christians have a job description? That's what we're always interested in. Another sermon could be, do Christians, what benefits are there? But that's another whole. We aren't even going there. Um, Ruth read so wonderfully the words from Romans. I think the, book, or the gospel that, the Romans passage that was read, sorry, that um, it's Paul giving Christians a job description. My little section in the Bible calls it marks of a true Christian. So, there are 24 phrases that describe what we can expect if we call of ourselves or if we see someone who is a Christian. What do Christians do? What are, what are they about? How can you tell one? Well, says Paul, here are 24 things that you can look for. Actually, Trevor, you did a pretty good job of starting out. We, we all pretty much got that. Um, we, we, we're, we were right with you with that. Um, they're not hard words that um, Ruth read to us. They're just hard to do. Here are some. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another. That's what Trevor did so beautifully. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Extend hospitality to strangers. You all did a wonderful job of extending hospitality to me this morning. 
Check that off your list. You don't have to pay attention to that one, at least for a day or two. I always like it when I can take something home. Remember the days when you went to Sunday school and you got a paper to take home? Well, it's always good to have something to take home because this service sends us out with things to do, with work to do. Um, so, um, sometimes that's a word or a hymn or a prayer or a new idea. So, this morning, I'm inviting you to take Romans 12, 19, 9 to 18, um, and I'm sure that if you forget what that is, you can Google um, the service for today, and it'll be right there, so you have it. Take those words home to lunch. Dust off the family Bible, or the one that you keep on the nightstand beside your bed. Um, all else fails, Google it. Romans 9, tw 9 to 18. Um, and I have reduced the reading assignment. For, it was a little longer in what Ruth, but we're just going to take those first nine verses. Here's some more. Bless those who persecute you. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty. Associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay evil for evil. Pick a phrase. Try to wear it for a few days. Don't pick something that you're good at. Pick something that kind of makes you say, oh, I'm not very good at that. Put it on your refrigerator where you can see it. Ask God for help. Offer it to God. And if all else fails, read verse 18. Um, I think this is Paul's Hail Mary to the Roman church. Um, I did check that out with my husband to know that that is a football term term, and women can use football metaphors, as long as I understand what it is. Um, I think after all those things, listen to what Paul leaves us with. If it is possible, that's a low bar, if it is possible, as so far as it depends on you, depending on what you have control over, Live peaceably with all. That's pretty doable. That's pretty doable. So I pray for you that you might find some refreshment, that you might find the one phrase that you can take home with you, that you can find some joy and some rest as you labor on Labor Day. Let us pray. Holy God, we are teachers, secretaries, salespersons, and students. We are CEOs, RNs, QBs, VPs, and ITs. We are housewives, poets, caregivers, writers, and scientists. We are truck drivers, athletes, and pastors. We are furloughed, retired, laid off unemployed, looking for work, on medical leave, and worried. We are your beloved children trying to do our best for you. Lord, this is who we are, and whatever we do as our work, we offer it to you. Lift up the work that we do, and may, may each small chore and each grand scheme be used to build up the world that you hope for us to have. Take the long hours and give them meaning. Take our dull routines and give them vision. Take our best intentions and help them come alive. May all that we do be worthy to be called your workers. 
We pray all this in the name of your Son, who worked to heal and save. And in the name of the Holy Spirit, who still is working in us and through us. And in your holy name. Amen. Together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our only Son, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. gather our hearts for prayer, please keep in your prayers the family and friends of Jim Conant. Jim died last Saturday, and his funeral will be this Wednesday at Hofmeister. We also pray for the family and friends of Dwayne Bruski, especially his sister, Wanda Udovich. Dwayne died on Wednesday. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. God of life, your words are the joy at the heart of your church. Draw the seeker to you. 
place messages of hope and healing in the mouths of your witnesses, and open your children to your truth when we stumble. Holy One, hear our prayer. God of steadfast love, renew the earth by your spirit, that lands and oceans reveal the beauty of your creation. Challenge us to live humbly and peaceably as part of your wor world. Holy One, hear our prayer. God of patience, lead those who govern to hold fast to what is good. Guide them to show honor to the people in their care. Overcome evil in all nations and grant peace to peoples and places mired in conflict. Holy One, hear our prayer. God of deliverance, remember all who are suffering, lonely, and in pain. Liberate your people being insulted, persecuted, or in the grasp of the ruthless. Give endurance to workers who persevere on this Labor Day and ensure fair wages and safe working environments. Holy One, hear our prayer. God of justice, equip this congregation to boldly follow you in uncertain times and to remain faithful in prayer when facing challenges. Show us how best to love and care for one another and our communities. Holy One, hear our prayer. God of glory, we give thanks for the saints who now dwell with you in splendor, especially Jim and Duane. Nurture us in faith until the day we join their heavenly song. Holy One, hear our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share in words and signs Christ's peace with one another. I'd invite you to be seated. I have a few announcements to share with you this morning. First of all, it is a new month, happy September, um, which means you should have received your new copy of Life with Emmanuel as you came in today. Um, I'd encourage you to take a look at this uh, digest newsletter to keep tabs on just a few of the things that are happening in the life of our congregation. Please note uh, that the church office and the Watertown Food Pantry will be closed tomorrow in observance of Labor Day. We will also not be having our evening worship service tomorrow. We hope that you have a safe and happy um, rest of your holiday weekend and we'll be back up and running on Tuesday. 
Next weekend is celebration weekend here at Emmanuel. We will be resuming our program year schedule, which means our worship times change next Sunday. So listen up. We have worship on Sundays at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. And we also have worship on Mondays at 6.30. Everyone's invited to the multi-purpose room next Sunday for snacks and singing at 9.15 as we kick off the Sunday school year together. The following week on September 17th and 18th, our worship service will have a focus on the healing of the nations. This will be something new for us. It's going to be a beautiful time of worship with singing and prayer and reflection. You might remember last year on Reformation Weekend, we had all of those sticky notes that we put on, on our doors um, where we wrote down things that we had hoped we would be able to celebrate in the year to come. And one of those common themes was peace, wholeness in our world and our personal lives. So I'd encourage you to join us on the 17th and 18th as we pray for healing and wholeness in the world around us. Finally, we will round out the month with a special worship service led by our Sunday school students on September 24th at 10.30 a.m. We are grateful for all of the ways you continue to be generous to our mission and life together here at Emmanuel. The offering plate is in the back of the worship space as you came in and as you leave, and there are a variety of ways to give in prayerful support of our congregation. Finally, we will come together in just a few moments to share in Christ's, uh, Christ's invitation to the table. Simply come forward as you are able, um, as you are invited by the ushers to receive a piece of bread in your hand, take a cup from the silver tray, and place your empty cup in the basket by the pillars and return to your seat by the side aisles. All of our wine is dealcoholized. Gluten-free wafers are available upon request. More importantly than all of those instructions, you are welcome at Christ's table. as you feel comfortable. Let us pray. 
Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care so that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image to one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. In the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus, born into the human family and dwelling among us. He revealed your glory. Giving himself to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way to freedom and life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Honor, glory, and praise to you, holy God, forever and ever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. There is a place for you at Christ's table. You may be seated.
if you feel comfortable. Let us pray. O oh God, in this Holy Communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our heart, serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God's blessing be with you. Christ's peace be with you. The Spirit's outpouring be with you, now and always. Amen.